Welcome to the PropTech Podcast. It's Kylie Davis here, and I'm delighted to be your host as we explore the brave new world where technology and real estate collide. I passionately believe we need to create and grow a sense of community between the innovators and real estate agents, and sharing our stories is a great way to do that. The aim of each episode is to introduce listeners to a prop tech innovator who is pushing the boundaries of what's possible and to explore the issues and challenges raised by the tech and how they can create amazing property experiences. And my guest in this episode is Nick Burris from Managed App a property management prop tech that caused a major stir when they first launched by claiming their technology did away with the need for trust accounts in real estate. But they have quickly become one of the leaders in second generation property management software. Now, you may recognise Nick's last name. It's true, he is the son of Mark Burris, entrepreneur and former CEO of Yellow Brick Road Mortgages. So in this interview, we talk about the challenges of launching a revolutionary idea in property management, the benefits of a high profile um, share register, and the pros and cons of having a famous dad. So Nick Burris, welcome to the PropTech Podcast. Thanks for having me, Kylie. Glad no, to be yeah, with you in spirit, given we're virtually together today. Oh, it's how it's how all it's how we were doing it before COVID. So it hasn't really changed. It hasn't really changed anything for us. But look, hey, Nick, when we start on the Prop Tech podcast, we always kick off with the elevator pitch. So what is your short, sharp elevator pitch for Manage? How tall is the building uh, <laughs> that the elevator is going up? So ah. <laughs> I don't know how, how long to, get, to pitch it. But um, look, I'll give you the, the short, sharp version. So I, and, and I agree, like keeping it short, as short as, as humanly possible is certainly the best thing. So look, we're, we're an alternative to trust accounting software. We, we do everything your trust accounting package does but I guess our major point of difference in the marketplace is, is that we also automate and facilitate payments as well. So, um, you know, the benefit in doing that uh, for, for agencies is obviously the removal of that, that human overhead, uh, whether you have a full-time trust accountant or not, there's, there's generally someone or a, or a bunch of people across the business that that job is sort of split amongst. And they're doing things like daily downloads, reconciliations, ABA file uploads, um, you know, pay, um, payouts on a weekly, fortnightly or monthly basis. And, um, you know, as the, as, the, as the old saying goes, they're sort of, they're doing it at the end of the month. It's actually titled end of month because it is such a big job. So um, automating that side of things is, has really been our point of difference in the market. Um, and, um, and, that, and that's sort of, um, you know, what's attracted um, most, of, um, most of the interest in our business to date. Mm, okay, so cool. So, um, is, so managed is trust accounting, an alternative to trust accounting. Do I, it, does it sit together with a new generation property management platform or? Absolutely. So, look, our platform is, you know, it's, it's, you know that's that's the other goal of our business is to sort of bring as many um, you know we're we're which our, our tagline is the property management platform for growth agencies so we, we don't just want your agency to grow your rent roll to grow we want you to be able we want it to scale as well we want your profitability to grow so I mean you know unfortunately property management to date has been a very human intensive process um, and you know as far as overheads go um, people are, are the most expensive salaries. Um, so you know, we we want agencies to, um, to to bring on as many managements to the to their rent rolls as possible, um, but also not lose that level of service and and not bring on the associated overhead that usually comes with with growing a rent roll. Um, if you look at sort of you know the, the major lenders in the space, people that are lending um, you know uh, against rent rolls to, to purchase other rent rolls, um, Macquarie for instance, um, they're looking less at you know annualised um, uh, management fees. Um, and, and they're starting to look at, um, you know, deeper, um, you know, uh, further to the bottom line of the P&L, um, trying to figure out profitability of these businesses, the viability of these businesses. Um, I think, you know, with margins getting squeezed on management fees um, and, and just, you know, your general net margins getting lower and lower, um, the big lenders out there in the space are starting to get a bit worried about the quality of these assets. So um, it really is our goal in this, in this industry to, to, to not only help agencies grow, their top line, but also grow their bottom line as well. Cool. So, so how did Manage start? What gave you guys the original idea? So, look, um, my my business partner and co-founder Tom uh, Richards. He he's been in real estate for over a decade. Um, you know, he uh, had his own agency, bought um, a number of rent rolls, and consolidated them under his brand. Um, 
you know, his, his business partner at the time was more of the sales engine in the business and Tom, you know, being the detailed guy he is, sort of more on the property management side of things and, you know, um, figuring out how to sort of, you know, put the right systems and infrastructure in place so that he could, he could grow a really good quality asset being the rent roll. Mm-hmm. Um, so he obviously used a lot of um, a lot of the, the incumbent um, uh, property management um, uh, applications and, and trust accounting packages. Um, he's you know used desktop packages, cloud packages, um, all the third party peripheral applications that sort of sit around you know your your, your trust accounting software. You, if you if you're sort of um, if, if you know the industry, your trust accounting package is generally the the big piece of technology in your in your rent roll business and then you probably have some third party applications sitting around it to do all the peripheral things like inspections and forms and that kind of thing. Um, so Tom had used a whole lot of these um, different pieces of technology, became very frustrated um, with with the tools that were available and what he, what he was paying for as a business. Um, he, he subsequently, you know, left the industry um, and then, uh, you know, after his sort of non-compete finished, um, decided he wanted to get back into it but um, wanted to do it um, with a different set of tools, technology, uh, it's tools and technology that he designed. So um, that's where him and I met up. Um, and at first, um, the goal was to, you know, to build a, a technology powered rent roll. Um, we actually had our own rent roll for a little for a little while when we first started. Um, and look, my intention was always to sort of build a SaaS business. That's sort of my background. And, um, you know, I wasn't, you know, as, 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 as great as a, as an asset as rent rolls are, um, it sort of really didn't interest me too much to sort of <laughs> building a large real estate agency in the, in the inner city of, of Sydney. Um, so, um, you know, uh, but it, what, what it did serve Ky- service with Kylie is, is a great testing ground. Um, so, you know, we had these, these, this captive audience of customers that were sort of forced to use our technology because, you know, they were, um, we had managing agency agreements with each of them, right, we were managing their properties. So it was, um, it was, a, it was a good place to sort of, um, you know, to, to get market feedback and to iterate and improve on the product, which we did um, for, for almost uh, 12 months. And then, um, and then we made the, the move into, into a SaaS business um, to, to sell the, the software um, far and wide to, to other agencies. Um, and, 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 you know, obviously wanting to avoid conflicts, we, we sold the rent roll that, that, that we had built up. Um, so that, that's sort of how the, um, the business sort of came to be, the genesis for the business. Um, you know, since that time, we've had, um, you know, a number of um, great strategic partners come on board with the business. Momentum Media, obviously being, you know, a, um, a large presence and a large influential presence in, in the real estate industry, um, you know, not just for, for agencies, but for, for landlords as well via their smart property investment platform. Um, so it really gave us, um, you know, a, a, a big megaphone to talk to um, all of our, um, all the, the, cu- the customers that are now on the platform. Um, and, um, and then last year, um, you know, another strategic investment from REA Group, who's, you know, a $16 billion ASX listed company, um, has, a, has um, a large presence in Australia, but, but also in, in, in countries like the US, India, China, UK, Singapore, New Zealand. Um, yeah, a, a whole bunch of other places that I can't remember off the top of my head. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and obviously not just, um, you know, a presence in sales, but um, a presence in, in, in the rental market as well via um, a whole bunch of um, uh, complementary products like OneForm. And um, um, uh, they've also got um, um, some, some great data tracking tools now. They, um, they're, they're now starting to sort of really crunch down on all the, all the raw data via the uh, home track acquisition that they made a number of years ago. So um, really saw an opportunity to, to not just sort of, you know, bring on a capital partner, but a, but a strategic partner in those two businesses as well. Um, so, and that's that's really sort of our corporate story to date in a nutshell. Um, and um, yeah, really enjoying, um, you know, notwithstanding everything that's going on out there, I'm still <laughs> really enjoying, um, you know, servicing this industry. Um, it's, uh, look, I think, you know, when, when we first got into it, um, you know, my, my my big attraction to the industry was how badly serviced I think it, it has been by technology in the past. And I think over the last few years, we've really seen um, all of that change, not just from, from our own activity, but, um, but you know, a number of other, uh, you know, you're following it um, probably more closely than anyone, Kylie. Um, we're really seeing, um, you know, uh, software providers and, and technology providers step up to the plate and, uh, and revolutionise how what has typically been a, quite an antiquated um, quite an antiquated business model, not just in sales, but in the rental market as well. Yeah. It, I mean, there has been an explosion in technology available for 
property management in over just even over the last three years that's come onto the market. So, um, so so that space is now pretty competitive. What differentiates managed from the other new property management solutions that are coming out there, like the you know like the our property and the um, Vault Aria got a, a, a property management um, solution coming out. There's Console Cloud, you know, the, and, and Property Tree and all the all of the other ones out there. Um, how does what's managed differentiation? Yeah. So look. Uh- I think, you know, and I know a little bit about all of these um, uh, competitors um, or, um, you know, or peers, um, probably a softer um, term, but, um, you know, it, it's definitely end-to-end payments with managed app, you know, and I, I've seen a lot of, like, uh, I've seen um, um, similar business models, um, you know, try to sort of replicate what we're doing, um, you know, and, and sort of they're doing that in some some funny ways that I, I don't want to get too deep into, but um, probably not the probably not the most compliant ways, um, sort of running big trust accounts and that kind of thing. Um, our, our model is, is definitely, um, you know, we, we, we work with, um, we have a number of banking relationships in the background um, and, um, and, and how that works is, um, you know, essentially users are transacting amongst themselves. Um, so, you know, there's, there are payment gateways there that um, each of our users, every time a user is created in our system, they're also created in, 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 um, in the system of, of, of our payment gateways and they're contracting individually with these payment gateways. Um, so, you know, what, what that effectively allows them to do is, uh, allows the landlord to do is to handle payments on their own. Um, without the need for an agency, and that's 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 the major point of difference with us is is that um, you know agencies don't want to do that job, um, and that's what our technology is allowing them to do is so allowing them to step back from that, let um, let all the, let the landlord, let the tenant, let the uh, you know in the in the case of man- uh, management fees, certainly the agency, um, but you know not handling any money on anyone's behalf, letting all those users like tradespeople, tenants, and landlords transact directly with each other. Um, and um, and that's um, and that's def- that's definitely the um, the major point of difference um, from us against um, anyone else in the market is you know if you look at trust accounting or, or traditional trust accounting um, or even um, you know a typical stack of technologies that's used in a in a large agency you'll have a you know desktop or cloud trust accounting package you'll have a trust bank account you'll have a full time trust account you you might have a, a rental collection system like Deft or Simple Rent. Um, and they're all sort of, you know, trying to sort of perform the role that, that managed app performs in one, um, which is, you know, streamlining that process. You know, I mean, the, the reason why, you know, systems like Deft and Simple Rent exist is for reconciliation. Um, you know, you, you, if you have just a straight up BSB and account number, you might get a, a payment from a tenant that isn't quite the right amount and doesn't have a transaction descriptor on it. And, you know, the poor property manager or trust accountant sitting there, you know, trying to figure out where the payment came from. Um, so that's that's why the, those payment systems exist. Um, you know, managed app is is you know we're we're fully automated, programmatic. Um, er, you know, there's no double entry bookkeeping going on. Um, it's it's effectively like NetBank for property management. Um, you know, every user gets a login. Everyone can see their their ledgers. Everyone can see. Um, you know, a landlord can see all the properties that they own. Uh, the tenant can see the, the property that they're tenanting. Um, they can see their, their tenant ledgers. Um, the uh, property manager can enter bills on, be- on behalf of the landlord. Um, those bills can be automatically scheduled and paid on the due date. Be pay bills can be paid with bill of codes and reference number, reference numbers from directly in the system. Um, bond claims are handled by the system. It's 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 designed to sort of really um, take all of that heavy lifting off of the property manager, so that they can spend more time being asset managers and not caretakers. Yeah. Um, I mean, you pay you know a property manager somewhere between I don't know five and a half to eight percent in some states, yep. um, you know, to manage what is typically your largest financial asset. Um, you know, forget your superannuation, like, you know, your, your, your real estate portfolio, even if it's just a portfolio of one, will be the biggest thing that you ever own. I can mm-hmm. tell you now that, that, that um, um, fund managers aren't getting paid 8%, um, <laughs> and, it, and it's, it's far more cerebral, the, the, the amount of um, work that goes into to managing a, an asset of equities and bonds and those kinds of things than, than, what goes in, than the thought that goes into managing a property portfolio, which shouldn't be the case. Um, you know, your property manager should be your financial advisor for your property. Um, they should be ensuring that you get the best possible return um, from your real estate investment. And if they're spending all their time running around um, organising payments and scheduling maintenance and uh, doing all the sort of um, nitty-gritty um, mundane, monotonous 
to work, um, there's no time to sit down and actually have a conversation with the landlord around, you know, the yield that they're getting out of the property, whether or not the rental market's any good at the moment, and whether or not they have a, need to have a conversation with a, with, with a salesman um, in the sales team. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's sort of the goal of Managed App is to sort of really um, take all that heavy lifting off their plates so that they can have more meaningful conversations with their customers, the landlords. And now let's hear a word from our sponsors. For almost 16 years, Direct Connect has made moving easy for over 1.2 million renters and homeowners by arranging connections to a wide range of services, from electricity and gas to internet and pay TV. With a national team of local account managers who are experts in the industry, Direct Connect are there to support your real estate business with competitive rewards for every successful connection, plus an industry-leading rewards program. The connection process is simple and Direct Connect's always on guarantee ensures your customers will be connected on the day they move in. Direct Connect offers a range of market leading suppliers and Direct Connect has now made it even easier than ever to send connections directly integrating with MRI software's property tree. So in just a few clicks while processing a tenancy, you can send the connection details through and get your customers connected. To make the right connection and find out how Direct Connect can make moving easy for you and easy for your customers, visit agents.directconnect.com.au or call 1300 558 169. I was going to ask you whether around the um, why it doesn't require a trust, why managed doesn't require a trust account, but just to summarize what you've just told us then, it really is because you've set up the the accounting between the landlord and the and the tenant sort of more directly and and what you guys have got sort of visual rights and ability to so so let me let me let me let me let me try and diffuse some of the the the, the you know I saw the controversy I saw the word controversy <laughs> in your in your email let me diffuse that controversy and just tell you it's not mutually exclusive. You can keep your trust account if you want to. All, all right, the property okay. managers out there, and we, we've we've got a, a good number of, of of property managers that keep their trust accounts because you know our system's a digital product. They might want to, um, you know, they might have tenants that are paying cash. You know, in which case, you know, like how does you know how does that exist? That doesn't is that even still a thing? God, <laughs> you, you'd be surprised, Kylie, at some of the the things that are going on out there. Checks, checks too. Um, so, um, you know, and then there's, um, you know, uh, subsidised public housing. Um, they sort of require, um, to, you know, to get paid into, into trust accounts. So our system exists, can exist alongside a trust bank account and we've, and we've got tools to help you um, reconcile the things that are going on inside your trust bank account as well. That's totally fine. Um, you know, we're, we're managed, you know, we're, we're not out there saying, get rid of your trust account. We're saying, look, our, our big value prop to, to agencies is let us help you with payments. You know, if we can take 99% of all the payments work off you um, and leave, you know, just a small amount of things to reconcile each month in your trust account, then we've done our job. We've, we've, mm. we've done what we wanted to do. Um, and, um, you know, so and, and in terms of, um, you, know, ha, ha, you know, whether or not you need to use your trust account, you only need to use your trust account if you're handling money in trust for somebody. And that's to- that makes total sense. Um, you know, if you're, gonna take some, if you're gonna take someone's money, someone else's money into a bank account that's not your own, that bank account should be a trust bank account because it's it's, it's fun. It, the the beneficial owners of that, that money is not you, you're not the uh, not the agency, right? If they're your management fees, they go into your business bank account because you've earned those. That's revenue for your business. That makes sense. Um, but if you if you're not handling if if um, if funds are sort of being um, transacted elsewhere, i.e. between the landlord and the tenant direct, which is what's happening on managed app, then and they don't pass through a trust bank account, then you know what's your trust bank account doing there? Uh, you know, and there, we have some agencies that are really, really quite staunch, really quite strict about how they run their businesses. They want to run really lean, um, scalable businesses. So they don't take cash. They don't take checks. Um, you know, sometimes they don't take tenants that are, um, you know, um, you know, receiving government assistance or something like that. I'm not sure if you if you are or you aren't allowed to do that. But anyway, the point is, um, all of these all of these things, um, uh, uh, you know, you you. you you can have your trust bank account over there to, to, to facilitate them or, you know, if you run your business in a certain way, you, you just say no to those types of customers um, and you run your business without a trust account. We've got lots of agencies that have um, set up with us from scratch without a trust bank account and have never used it. Um, and that's that's fine too. Um, we, you know, I always advocate, hey, I think it's probably a good idea that you have a trust bank account sitting alongside um, managed app. Um, because you know you never know when you might need to handle some money on behalf of somebody, and you want to do that in a in a, in a compliant way. So, 
um, mm. keep your trust bank account there just in case um, as, a, as a safety blanket. So are you guys, do you guys use, block, you know, the ubiquitous blockchain? Is so that- blockchain. Um, so did you, uh, did, you, did you want me to explain blockchain? I saw that. Was- <laughs> well, well, I mean, only if you use it. <laughs> it is, are you using the magic of blockchain as part of your, as part of your process or? No, we, we, you know, we offer very, you know, in terms of, so blockchain, you know, is effectively, you know, a, a decentralized network of, 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 of computers that are running a ledger, right? Um, and, um, you know, a, you know, if you look at the banking system. Oh, I like that as an explanation, though. That's cool. That, that got it. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, so, so, so the bank, you know, if it, it's all, a, a blockchain is, is, is synonymous with currency, right? Um, you know, other, you know, cryptocurrency specifically. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason why cryptocurrency emerges is because, um, you know, there was a bunch of people out there that, you know, untrusting of, of typical banking systems and fiat currencies, like paper currency, Um and, um, you know, because uh, and the word decentralised basically means it's not a bank. So, so uh, you know, a, a bank will run a, a ledger, obviously, because they want to keep track of who's, who, who um, has what in their respective bank accounts. And the central bank will run a ledger because all the banks collectively settle with the central bank, right, with the RBA. Um, so, I mean, you know, this, this decentralised ledger, and you think about Bitcoin, for instance, as a, as a, as a cryptocurrency, um, uh, you know, they all um, there's ledgers that are that exist on thousands and thousands of computers around the world. And every time a transaction happens, a block of transactions, um, those thousands of computers around the world that are all being connected by this blockchain network, um, all on different nodes and things like that. And it's getting a bit techy, but um, they're all validating the transactions that are going through, right? And they're using you know the combined computing power to 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 do um, encryption. On, on those on those transactions as well. That's where the crypto comes from, right? Encrypted um, currency, and um, so so there really isn't like you know I, I you know our, our transactions aren't uh, we don't offer Bitcoin. Um, we, uh, who 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 out there amongst um, the Australian landlords and tenants um, uses crypto? You know, typically uses cryptocurrency to transact. Um, uh, uses crypto to, to pay their rent. No, hardly anybody, if anyone at all. Um, and, and you know our agencies um, would look at us um, you know, with a bit of a funny look if, if we um, if we suggested that as a, as a payment method or an alternative for them to use. Um, so no, we, we transact in very traditional ways. Um, you know we offer direct debit, we offer Mastercard, Visa, um, BPay. We're offering Amex soon. Um, and and really in terms of um, blockchain as a technology, um, immutable append-only ledgers, um, you know, there, there really isn't a use case for it at the moment. I mean, you might want to, I don't know, maybe create a blockchain for, for, for t- uh, tenancies that are on a, on a lease. That might be an interesting um, use case for, um, for blockchain technology. Um, uh, uh, but, I mean, you know, really you, only, you would only use blockchain where you want to keep something super secure because it is a secure form of technology. Um, but you know, there other than payments, um, which, which um, you know, most people don't want to transact in that way. Um, there really isn't a, a, um, a, another secure piece of the platform that you would want to, um, you know, make use of blockchain for. I don't think okay. not at this stage. No. Okay. So, so just so we're clear, managed isn't using blockchain, and blockchain uh, is a solution looking for a problem in real estate at the moment. In exactly your right. That yep. is, I like that term. It's yep. it, and, and, and don't ever do that as a business <laughs> owner. You know, don't go out and solve problems that don't exist. I think I may have stolen that phrase from Chris Rolls. But look, if there's anyone out there, yeah, if there's anyone out there who is using blockchain in real estate who would like to um, counter that argument, by all means, get in touch. I'd love to have you on the show. So, so Nick, what's the what's the business model for managed? Because I think when I was looking on the website, you guys, the, well, you have a free. Yeah, yeah. So, so we've actually just introduced a, a new, more flexible pricing model. So, look, manage that. Free is pretty flexible. It, it can, it it can be. So, it can. So, the way our, our model used to work was, you know, we levied. Um, you know, we, we we have lots and lots of tradies in our network. Yep. Um, and we used to levy, effectively levy the the we, um the the our fees um to agencies on on the trades people that did work. Um, for, for the agencies in our network, um, you know, for agencies, you know, it's in, it's it's, you know, if you if you if you if you know the the marketplace problem, 
um, it actually doesn't exist um, in real estate or in, in property management because um, they've already um, each each agency that we bring on board to the network they, they're effectively their own little marketplace. They've got this great um, supply of work being their rent roll, mm-hmm. um, you know, investment properties that are always getting messed up by tenants and and, and maintenance and repairs and capital improvements and things that need to occur um, as as general sort of um, as the general sort of life cycle of a of a property goes. Um, and and they and they also have you know over, if you've been running a rent roll for a long time you typically um, have a long list of tradespeople that you that you work with right and you know it's a, it's it's something that um, you know I think tradespeople have really enjoyed for a long time um, is is having access to a a large agency with lots and lots of work um, so you know the the deal we did with agencies back in the day was. Um, well, you know, why don't we give you guys a free platform, and you just and and then every time a, a job goes out to a tradesperson, we'll take a little bit, of, take a little percentage of that, um, and um, and that was um, that worked um, okay for a while, um, and now now we have some agencies that um, you know pr- probably prefer to sort of not participate in the marketplace. Um, so we we offer um, you know um, a typical uh, subscription fee for them as well. But every agency in the network, if you process enough trades via the platform, you have the ability to um, to get a free platform at some stage. Um, oh, great. And, that inc- okay. and that includes you know free features and free transaction costs and um, all sorts of rewards and bonuses for for making use of of the trading marketplace that we've cultivated over the years. Oh, okay, cool. So so how big are you guys now? I mean, because you mentioned before about all about your investment from um, REB or Momentum Media and um, realestate.com. dot com. What, what, how, how, how big are you? How big am I? Okay, so I'll I'll, I'll answer that as best I can. So we've got hundreds of agencies, we've got mm-hmm. thousands of managements, and we've got hundreds of millions of dollars worth of transactions going through every year. Right. Okay. <laughs> cool. You're going to play. You're playing coy on the. <laughs> Your capitalization, or exactly, you know. Yep, fair enough. You got to, uh, you got to be, you can't be too specific with these things. It's changing all the time, and um, you know, uh, it's my sh- my shareholders and board of directors don't like giving out that. Tip. Fair enough. No, no, that that's fine. As a real estate agent, you know you need to be doing more content marketing, but creating posts for social media, creating videos and reports is hard work. Lots of hard work and it takes time. So that's why you need Homeprezzo. If you're a typical agent posting one or two social media posts a week, Homeprezzo can save you between 75 to 100 hours a year. How many more properties could you sell if you had that time back? Homeprezzo can help you create engaging, informative videos about how the property market in your local suburb is performing. Plus, it makes creating suburb reports, rental videos for landlords, and social media infographics an absolute piece of cake. If you can type in a suburb or type an address, you can create a Prezzo using Home Prezzo in just a few minutes. Listeners to the Prop Tech podcast receive a 14 day free trial. Now, that's twice as long as the normal free trial. So go to homeprezzo.com.au and click the sign up button and use the code PropTech to get your extended free trial. Or click the link in our show notes. So, so Nick, you are the son of um, entrepreneur Mark Burris. Has that been a help, or a, has it, or or something you've had to work around? Um, look, you know, it, it just depends on who, on on who you're talking to and what day of the week it is. <laughs> Whether you've had a family dinner that weekend or not. <laughs> yeah, so, sometimes it's a help. Sometimes it's a hindrance. <laughs> um, you know, um, I look. I think most people out there like my old man and, and it's, it's certainly helped me in the past. Um, um, and then there are days where you sort of, um, uh, you know, where people sort of uh, uh, sort of um, doubt your credibility um, and, um, you know, sort of um, feel like, you know, the, the make assumptions about, you know, the, the, the ride I've had through life and, 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 and how easy or, or challenging things have been for me and whether or not I'm, up to the task of, of performing a service for them. Um, and, look, I, I always just let my feet do the talking, um, Kylie. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, um, you know, uh, I think, you know, with a, with, um, uh, a, f- a famous parent or not, you've always got to, um, you've always, you know, with everybody in every relationship, business, personal or otherwise, um, you need to you need to prove yourself, um, and, and, and that's what we do here every day. Um, every, every, every day you turn up and every day you... Um, yeah, you put yourself on the park and you put your best foot forward and 
um, whether you're trying to win new business or, or keep, um, you know, uh, service and, 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 and keep the existing customer base that you have happy, um, you've always got to do your best. Very true, very true. So, look, a few weeks ago we had um, me and Radhakrishnan from Different on the show and, as you know, Different's business model is really high automation, really high process at the back end, which allows them to charge just $100 a month for their property management fees. That's clearly got lots of implication or big implications for traditional um, property management. How does managed help PMs compete with something like that? Yeah, so uh, I, we actually used to share an office with those guys. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so Tom, Tom uh, my business partner, he um, had um, he had a, a minority share in a co-working space in Darlinghurst. And when we first started, we used to, um, before we moved into, you know, our digs here at North Sydney with, with Phil and Al, um, you know, uh, um, we used to, yeah, they, they were um, literally in the next suite next to us. Um, and um, I think they'd just received an investment from a mate of mine, um, from Daniel Petrie at Airtree. Um, and um, it was interesting, you know, um, I, like looking at the model, um, you know, I, I would definitely, I, w- I would call them a DIY product, um, a B2C product. So, you know, land, mm-hmm. uh, going to landlords directly. Um, you know, uh, it's interesting, you know, uh, they, they, I, I don't know, I have never used the platform before, but I would have to say that there must be a hell of a lot of automation going on to charge a hundred a flat rate of a hundred bucks a month for a landlord, um, although that or they're hemorrhaging money. Um, but um, if you look at the things, it, it, when we got into this business, we did a lot of research um, and, you know, um, Momentum ha- has a large audience and we surveyed the crap out of that audience um, asking very specific questions around, you know, um, do, you, do you manage your property yourself? Do you use a property manager? Um, you know, what, you know, if, you, if you've used it, um, you know, how likely would you be to manage your own property? Um, you know, uh, what's, you know, trying to sort of figure out what the, um, what the market's appetite is for, for, for doing all this stuff themselves with the, the assistance of good technology. Um, and I, I, I got to tell you, it's low. Um, you know, most most um, um, most landlords um, that have, um, in the surveys that we ran, the, the landlords that had jumped over the fence into do it yourself jumped straight back into full service property management. Um, and it doesn't surprise me. The list is as long as your arm of things that you need to do, Kylie. It's it, you know everything from you know marketing the property, um, you know uh, running the open homes. Ten, uh, screening tenant applications, um, you know, tenancy agreements. Uh, then you get you move into the um, you know the day to day property management, so scheduling maintenance and repairs. Um, you know, collecting the rent. Um, uh, you, you know, uh, running the the ingoing reports, the routines, the outgoing reports, going to NCAT tribunals uh, mm-hmm. when the tenant gets upset. You know, um, the, <laughs> the list goes on. It's just it's just uh, you know so many things that you got to do, and you got to wonder to yourself. Um, what's your time worth? You know, like, um, is it really worth the five or six percent that you pay away every year to a property manager? And 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 in in my in my opinion, the answer is emphatically no. Um, the reason why a property manager can do it for so for, for such a low amount is that they've got scale. You know, they built a business around it. They've got you know a, a bunch of different property managers. They've got systems and procedures, and um, you know they've systemized and created processes and. That's allowed them to 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 you know manage you know hundreds of properties, um, and you know yours being one of them at um, a fraction of the cost time cost that you, that you as an individual could do it yourself. Um, you know I've um, you know I've got relatives I won't I'll keep it at that um, that that are managing their own property and and I just and, and they and they they're smart people they 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 make lots of money uh, you know on an hourly basis and I wondered to myself. Like you know, have you ever that, have you ever gone and done the calculation? You know, you're an investment banker, you're a doctor, you're this, you're that. You know, surely your time's better spent doing what you know what to do and giving that job over to you know the 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 day to day of running your passive what is a, should be a passive investment to to a, um, a manager. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's like trying to sort of manage your own superannuation portfolio. You know, picking stocks and stuff like that. Like, there's no. Like you shouldn't you shouldn't be trying to do that. Is that you know? It's called the specialization of labor. Everyone should be doing what they have a comparative advantage in the economy to do. You know, um, if you and I, Kylie, if you and I um, can both, um, let's just say that um, you wash dishes really well, um, and, and I dry. I don't. Uh, no, I, no, I, dry <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Ask my husband. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, luckily there are machines for that. Um, but, um, you know, trying to sort of make it as simple as possible, you, you know, you wash dishes, I dry dishes. Um, you know, I do, I, I wash and dry dishes better than you. Um, but if you were to ask me what I do better than, the, you know, out of the two tasks, what I do better, I dry dishes better. That means that I should dry dishes and you should wash dishes. You know, it doesn't matter if you've got an absolute advantage in, in, in something, everyone should do what they have a comparative advantage in doing. It doesn't matter if you think you're the, the bee's knees in managing property, as well as being a doctor or a lawyer and, or banker, um, you should, you know, your job in the economy should be doing the thing that you're most skilled at. You know, not the thing that you're not doing all the things that you think you have skills in doing. Um, so, yeah, look, I, 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 I don't think it's uh, uh, and that's why we've, you know, and, and that's why we, um, part, you know, we have the partners that we do now. Um, we have a firm belief that, that, that real estate agents will continue to perform an important function in this industry. Um, both in sales and both in property management, um, irrespective of, of, auto, of the level of automation that's going on, which I, which I don't think c can be that much better than than what we're doing right now for, for the agencies that we service. Right. So, so what do you think the key challenges are that property managers are currently facing? I mean, given that there's been so much tech coming onto the market in the last couple of years, what do you think they need to be addressing the quickest? Um. I think the things they need to look certainly figuring out how to scale, um, you know, so how to how to get all these all these um, you know day to day you know repetitive tasks off their desk. Also trying to figure out um, you know how do they play how do they create an ecosystem how do they um, connect um, you know all the how do they sit around the the real estate asset as a as an asset manager as opposed to a caretaker. So how do I so what I mean by that is. How, how do I? And there's so many things that come off real estate investing, right? There's, there's the financing of the property, there's the the day-to-day -day property management of the property, um, you know, there's valuation around it. There's you know um, maintenance, repairs, capital improvements. Um, there's insurance. There's um, you know um, strata management. There's there's all these things that sit around the, the real estate investment. Um, and, and, and you know, and then there's you know accounting as well. So how, how do I? You know, how do, how do, as a property manager or as a, as a as an agent in a, in an agency, how do I sit around this this very large asset um, and perform the role of an asset manager? How do I perform an advisory role as opposed to a um, as opposed to a um, um, a, a caretaker or, or, or dog's body role, which is which is sort of you know how they've existed to date, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and how do I skill myself up to to perform that role optimally? Yeah, fantastic. And so what do you think the next five years is going to hold for property managers with your crystal ball out? <laughs> um, so, uh, look, I, th I, think, I, think that, that's what I, I think that's what's going to happen. Um, we're, going to see, um, we're going to see a consolidation of, um, of, of, of all these different services, um, you know, around, that, that sit around the real estate investment. Um, and we're going to see all these different service providers playing a, um, a much more interconnected role with the aid of technology. Um, mm. So, you know, I mean, and that's, that's why payments was such an important thing for us, right, is, um, you know, uh, we, we wanted to sort of build out infrastructure that allowed, that enabled, um, you know, certain property transactions to occur. Um, and, 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 you know, at, you know, at some stage soon, you know, what's happening with our business and I'm probably creating a segue for you here is, is, um, where, you know, where we're bolting on adjacent services. Um, and, and I think, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, how you connect those services, you can, you can have referral arrangements and all that sort of stuff. And that's, that's a light integration. Um, uh, but I think, you know, the, the, the most, um, uh, the most deeply integrated way of doing that is to put a payments, um, infrastructure around it. Um, right. and, that's, and that's what our payment partnerships with, um, that's what our respective banking relationships have, have allowed us to do. Right. So, so what does, so that's what the future holds for managed or, or tell us a little bit more about that. So, yeah, um, I, we, we definitely see ourselves, um, um, really owning the real estate investment. So, um, and when I say owning it, I mean, probably the wrong word. Um, really, um, enabling, um, the, the, the professionals in this industry to own it. So you know, and I, like, and and I'll and, and I'll, I'll back that point up. You know, we're a fully white label product. So I mean, you know, every time we sign up an agency, they get their logo, color scheme, style guide all over the application for all of their users, for all notifications, for all reports that get generated out of the system. You don't see managed app anywhere. Um, you know, we're, we're we're doing some cool stuff like putting them on subdomains for for, for the eight respective agencies' websites. 
sites as well. So, yeah, we, we want to be, we, uh, we want a relationship with the agency. Um, we, we don't, you know, we, we, we totally respect that, um, that the agency will always own that relationship with the landlord and the tenant and anyone else that sort of sits under, um, under their ecosystem. Um, but we want to enable those agencies and the, and the professionals that work in those businesses to, um, uh, to provide as, as, as many adjacent services to real estate investing as possible. Fantastic. Well, look, Nick, it's been fantastic to talk to you today. Thank you so much for your time and, and for um, telling us all about um, Managed App. It's been great to have you on the show. So that was Nick Burris from Managed App. And I've always been fascinated by the Managed App story. I love the transparency that they offer landlords around spending on their property and their clever thinking around using the technology that we actually all take for granted in banking apps and using that to streamline real estate transactions and save time for property managers. I love how everything in Managed is actually around the whole transaction process. I also like the flexibility in their thinking around their business model, and they were one of the first that I'm aware of that offered their service free to property managers because they had a charging model that was based on trades and services. So if you're in the market for a new property management system, they're probably worth having on your shortlist. Uh, and I've included their details in the show notes. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode of the PropTech Podcast, I would love you to tell your friends or drop me a line via email, kylie at realcontent.guru, LinkedIn, or on our Facebook page. And you can follow this podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor, and Apple iTunes. I'd like to thank my audio support, Charlie Hollands and the fabulous Jill Escudero, and our sponsors, Smidge, the official wines of the pop tech community, Homeprezzo, turning property data into amazing marketing content, and of course, Direct Connect, making moving easy. So thanks everyone. Until next week, stay safe and keep on prop teching.